Ireland has seen a ton of people from other countries move in over the past few years, leading to a lot of anti-immigrant feelings and unrest all over the country. In this video, we will be talking about the immigrants are ruining this country, Ireland. This backlash is mostly because there's been a big increase in the number of foreigners coming to live in Ireland. Between April 2022 and April 2023, more than 140,000 immigrants came to Ireland, which is the highest number in 16 years. Even after counting the people who left, there were still more than 77,000 new immigrants in the country, which is a 50% increase from the year before. This big wave of new people is mostly because COVID-19 restrictions were lifted and more than 100,000 Ukrainians moved to Ireland after the Russian invasion. The 2022 census showed that around 20% of the population, or more than a million people out of the total 5.1 million, were born somewhere else, which really puts the number of immigrants in Ireland into perspective. It's clear that they play a big part in the country's makeup. This rapid increase in immigration has really stirred things up, with protests, arson attacks, and a hardening of anti-immigration views. It's bringing back memories of the troubles in Northern Ireland which were a really intense time. People are worried about how this influx of new people is going to affect resources, jobs, and how well different cultures fit together. It's not a new topic, but it's been getting a lot more attention lately. Ireland has had a fair amount of immigrants over the past few decades, which has some people worried about the impact on Irish culture and identity. It's important to remember that immigration can bring both good and bad things. On one hand, it can add to the diversity of our culture and the economy. On the other hand, if it happens too fast or isn't managed well, it can put a strain on things. There's no easy answer, but it's important that we keep talking about it and finding ways to make sure everyone feels welcome and respected. According to what people are saying, Dublin and other cities are getting more diverse, but most of Ireland's population is still Irish. A lot of people in Ireland seem okay with reasonable levels of immigration, but they also want it to be well-regulated and managed so it doesn't become too much for the country to handle. It's a complicated issue, and it's not easy to find the right balance. It's important for the government to listen to everyone's concerns and work together to come up with solutions. There's a lot of talk about people feeling like their voices aren't being heard or that the government is more interested in pleasing other countries or powerful groups than taking care of its own people. A lot of Irish people are worried about how the current situation will affect them and their families. They're not against people from different backgrounds, but they're concerned about whether the country can handle any more people without having enough schools, hospitals, and other important services for everyone. It's understandable that they'd be worried and the government needs to address their concerns in a fair and effective way. Many Irish individuals are unhappy with their government's priorities and actions. They feel the government isn't dealing with the real concerns of ordinary people, like rising costs of living, a lack of affordable housing, and struggling to get access to healthcare and education. Instead, it seems like the government is focused on pleasing outside parties, like big corporations and international organizations. This has led to a lot of frustration and mistrust among the Irish public. People want their government to concentrate on making life better for its citizens by tackling issues like inequality, creating jobs, and improving infrastructure. They want their government to be more open and accountable and to prioritize the needs of the Irish people over what anyone else says. It's starting to feel a bit like Britain here where immigrants and their descendants have become so numerous that they're now demanding special rights and benefits, sometimes at the expense of native Irish individuals. The media's line that they're just the same as us doesn't seem to hold water anymore. These groups are asking for affirmative action, job preferences, and extra government spending in their communities, which has an impact on everyone else. Ireland has let too many foreigners in without proper checks, meaning there are some really dodgy characters walking the streets. And yet, neither the government, the opposition parties, the media, nor the police seem to be taking these issues seriously. Ireland has been dealing with a few big issues lately, and they all kind of tie together. First off, there's been an immigration and refugee situation going on for a while, 
And now, there's also a housing crisis on top of it. Back in 2018, protests broke out in rural areas against the idea of setting up refugee centers. But in 2022, when the war in Ukraine started, Ireland and other European countries welcomed Ukrainian refugees with open arms. By mid-November 2022, over 58,000 Ukrainians had found their way to Ireland. Meanwhile, Ireland's been struggling with a housing shortage since around 2015, so when you add all these refugees into the mix, it just makes things even harder. There aren't enough places for everyone to live, and that's led to some tense situations. In November 2022, protests started up against plans to build temporary shelters for refugees, which just goes to show how tight things have gotten. The government's got their work cut out for them, trying to deal with both crises at once. They've got to make sure the refugees are taken care of, but they also need to figure out how to provide housing for everyone in the country. It's a tough balance to strike, and they've really got to think on their feet and use all their resources wisely. It's not easy dealing with all these problems, and there aren't any easy solutions, but it's important that everyone works together and communicates openly so we can find a way through this and make things better for everyone involved. The issue of immigration and asylum seekers has been a pretty hot-button topic across Europe lately, with everyone freaking out about the surge in numbers and how it's putting a ton of strain on resources and infrastructure. In Ireland, it's been particularly messy, with a huge increase in asylum seekers over the past couple of years, leading to tensions and even some violence in certain cases. Now, most of the protests against this issue have been pretty chill, but there have been a few instances where things got a bit out of hand, like that time last year in Dublin, when some guy of Algerian origin allegedly stabbed three little kids and a woman, which caused a lot of people to lose their minds and go on a bunch of arson sprees across the country for months afterward. The number of asylum seekers arriving in Ireland has been absolutely insane, with over 26,000 in the past two years alone, which is a 200% increase compared to 2019. That's not just an Irish thing either, because the European Union as a whole got 874,000 asylum applications in 2022, and almost 650,000 in just the first eight months of this year, on top of the 4 million Ukrainians given temporary protection due to the whole Russia invasion thing. Reception centers all over Northern Europe are basically at capacity, but the actual number of people traveling to Europe without permission is actually lower than it was in 2015. Still, the growing public concern over the increasing number of asylum applicants has given rise to a lot of nationalism in various European countries. So, yeah, it's a messy situation all around, but I think we can all agree that it's important to find some sort of solution that works for everyone involved. It is a tough situation, with no easy answers, because it involves balancing humanitarian concerns, managing resources, and dealing with public opinion, finding the root causes of displacement, making the asylum process smoother, and building understanding and empathy between communities could be really important steps in handling this difficult situation. Lately, more and more people have been seeking asylum, and this has led to an increase in support for populist and far-right political parties all over Europe. These parties have been gaining ground, and they're expected to do really well in the upcoming European Parliament elections in June 2024. Their influence could have a big impact on policies at the European Union level. A lot of governments are worried that voters will get mad and turn to these parties, so they're doing whatever they can to cut the number of people trying to cross their borders, like processing asylum claims in other countries. But Ireland hasn't really taken any big steps like that. In Ireland, people have been protesting against the government's handling of mass migration, and they're worried about things like not having enough housing, rising living costs, and crimes committed by migrants. They're calling for the government to stop letting so many people in and criticizing them for not taking care of the needs of Irish citizens first. It is important to keep in mind that the situation is always changing, so it's smart to stay up to date by checking official sources and reliable news outlets. The Irish government's handling of the immigrant crisis has been a hot topic, with some people praising their efforts and others criticizing it. 
a lot of Irish people are really angry about the number of immigrants coming in, especially asylum seekers, because they're worried about how it'll affect their local communities. Recently, there's been a lot of protests in Dublin, with people carrying Irish flags and demanding stricter immigration controls. They're calling for a new government that'll put an end to mass migration. During these protests, you could hear chants like, get them out, aimed at the current administration. People had signs and banners with messages like, Irish lives matter, under siege, invasion, mass deportations, and end the plantation. The protesters feel like they're representing the majority of people in Ireland who are frustrated with how many immigrants there are and how many refugees the country has taken in. They're upset that the mainstream media doesn't seem to cover their protests as much or fairly, and they point to news outlets like RTE, the national broadcaster, as an example. They say RTE barely covered a huge anti-immigration march, only giving it six lines on their website. In contrast, Gripped, a newer media outlet, has been giving a lot of coverage to these protests, filling in the gaps left by other news sources. It's clear that people in Ireland are getting fed up and want their concerns about immigration and media representation to be heard. A lot of immigrants have moved to Ireland over the past couple of decades, and now about one in five people living there aren't citizens. That makes Ireland the fourth most immigrant-populated country in the whole European Union. The influx started with an agreement called the Nice Treaty in 2003, which let people move around Europe more freely. At first, it wasn't a big deal, because most of the immigrants were from Eastern Europe, and they came to work during the time when Ireland's economy was booming in the early 2000s. But recently, the country has been seeing a lot more asylum seekers showing up on its shores, and that's led to taxpayers footing the bill for things like welfare benefits and housing. One example of this is the more than 104,000 Ukrainian refugees who've come to Ireland since the start of the war. Ireland's right on the western edge of Europe, but it's been really generous with these refugees, giving them free accommodation, free healthcare, and even a weekly payment of about $235 until recently. In addition to all the Ukrainian refugees coming in, Ireland has been housing another 30,000 or so refugees from other countries too, and we taxpayers have shelled out over 1 billion euro in just the first nine months of this year to make sure they're taken care of. That's a lot of money, especially when you consider that Ireland's debt is already sky high, with each of us owing more than 40,000 euro per person. Yeah, we've built some modular homes and all that for the refugees, but we haven't done nearly enough for our homeless population, which is at an all-time high right now. The situation is only getting worse, and it's starting to feel like we're spreading ourselves too thin. Our healthcare system is struggling, and the housing crisis isn't getting any better either, what with inflation making everything so much more expensive. It's clear that something's gotta give here, but we need to find a way to balance things out so we can help both the migrants and our own citizens. We can't keep pouring money into this forever, and we need to make sure everyone gets the support they need. It's not an easy task, but it's important that we figure it out soon. The issue of asylum seekers and economic migrants is a big deal in Ireland, just like in lots of other countries around the world. A lot of Irish people are worried about whether the asylum system is fair and if it's putting too much strain on public services. One of the main concerns people have is whether everyone who asks for asylum really needs it, or if some people are just coming here to find a better job. There's a feeling that some people might be taking advantage of the system and using up taxpayers' money. But it's important to remember that the asylum process is meant to help people who are in real danger in their home countries, like if they're being persecuted or hurt. It's not meant to be a way for people to just come to Ireland for a better life. The Irish government has been trying to deal with these worries, like making the asylum application process faster and making sure people can't abuse it. But even so, there's been a lot of people coming to Ireland looking for asylum, and that's putting pressure on things like housing, healthcare, and social services. There are different opinions about how much of an impact asylum seekers have on the economy. While it costs money to help and support them, 
Some people say they can also bring in money through jobs and starting their own businesses, and that they can add to our culture too. Overall, there are a lot of different things to think about when it comes to asylum seekers and economic migrants in Ireland. It's a complicated issue with a lot of different sides to it. And it's not just about money or rules. It's also about human rights and treating people fairly. As citizens, we need to approach this topic with empathy, understanding, and a commitment to doing what's right for everyone involved. That means making sure the system works for people who really need it, while also making sure it's sustainable for our country in the long run. If you liked watching this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.